Okay, guys and girls, here's the video for 2.6. The first in a series of hurricane videos. Just kidding. Okay, so 2.6 starts on page 121, and it talks about inflection points and the second derivative. So, we know that the derivative of a function is equal to a rate of change. And it could be the rate of change of a function at a point, x equals to a, or it could be the rate of change of a function over its entire domain, in which case we would not plug a number in here, but we just call it x and we'd get a new function. In the case above, we are plugging the point of interest in, and when all is said and done, we end up with a number, right? So, let's not forget this little deal here, because even though we're not going to curve sketch anymore from pretty much this point on, um, we are always going to interpret graphs, but we're not going to curve sketch, and so we're still going to need this. But what I want you to notice is the second derivative is a rate of change of the rate of change function, and it describes long-term trends. Okay? It's also useful for finding inflection points, and that's just a place on the graph of a function where the concavity changes. So, you know, maybe you have a function f that, you know, looks something like this. And it's concave up here and concave down here. So somewhere in between that min and max, the concavity is, going, is changing from concave up to concave down. Um, the other case could happen, too, where, you know, maybe you have a function that looks like this. It's going from concave down to concave up. Regardless of how it's moving or what it looks like, the change in concavity is going to happen somewhere in between the max and min and that's called an inflection point. Okay, so the second derivative is important because it tells us when the concavity changes and in fact once we learn how to find second derivatives we can find exactly the x value for which the concavity of a function changes. So the only criterion that you need to know is that points of inflection occur if and only if, so this is a very strong message here, if and only if the second derivative equals zero and changes sign. So when you're looking at a graph of a second derivative, what you're looking for is the zeros of the graph, and you want to see whether or not the zeros change sign. So I've got your book here, and this is um, from the homework section on page 125. This is uh, problem number two, just because I want to focus on the graphs here. So this graph here is the graph of a second derivative. And what I notice is that I've got a zero here, and I've got another zero here. So I say, okay, well, does the graph of f change concavity? Does it have an inflection point at x equals to negative 3? And I would say no, because the second derivative does equal to zero there, but it's not changing sign. It's not crossing the x-axis. But over here, at this point, we would expect an inflection point on the graph of f at x equals 1 because the second derivative is changing sign. It's going from negative to positively valued at that point. Likewise, this graph of g, we've got a 0 here, and lo and behold, at x equals negative 1, the sign's changing. It's going from positive to negative, so that means on the graph of f I'll have an inflection point, and also at x equals to 3, the second derivative, is changing sign, and so I would expect an inflection point at the point x equals to 3 on the graph of f. Now, in number 1, this is a graph of f, and it's clear from the graph that the graph from negative 3 to about 1-ish, so right about here, is concave up, and somewhere in this area it switches to concave down. So, you know, it could be here, it could be a little bit to the left or the right of that point, but anyway, the concavity is changing here. And what I know from my gospel is that the second derivative has to be positively valued up to about this point, and then the second derivative has to be negative. So when you think about the gospel, even though you're not curve sketching or whatnot, we know that the function is going to go from concave up to down or concave down to up based on the... Um, the sign of the second derivative. Okay, if the second derivative is positive, my graph is going to be concave up. 
if it's negative, my graph is going to be concave down. So it makes sense if the graph goes, like in this little picture, from concave up to concave down, that there's going to be an inflection point somewhere in between. Capiche? And essentially, I don't know why I'm out of focus here. Sorry, I've been getting dings and phone calls. Um, so I had to pause. But essentially, that's what this section boils down to. All right? And by the way, it should also be noted that, you know, the derivative of velocity, right? Because the first derivative, we relate to velocity. Um, if I take, if I have, if I have a function, d of t, let's say, um, and I take its derivative, I'm going to get velocity. If I take the derivative of velocity, so I don't want that there, alright, I'll put it there, the derivative of velocity, I'm going to get acceleration. So acceleration is also related to the second derivative. 